We live in a world that never sleeps, our schedules are packed, our minds are always racing, and our screens are constantly lit. But amidst this hustle and bustle, there's a silent enemy that's slowly creeping in, affecting millions worldwide. This enemy, my friends, is depression. Depression is a mental health disorder characterized by persistently depressed mood or loss of interest in activities, causing significant impairment in daily life. It's not just feeling sad or going through a rough patch. It's a serious health condition that requires understanding and medical care. But what if I told you that one of the keys to fighting this unseen enemy is something as simple as your daily sleep. Yes, you heard it right. Sleep, a fundamental aspect of our lives, plays a crucial role in our mental health. In the next few minutes, we will embark on a journey to understand the impact of our daily routines on depression risk, starting with the impact of sleep. We will explore the link between sleep and depression, and how tweaking our sleep habits can significantly reduce our risk of falling into the clutches of this unseen enemy. So buckle up and get ready as we delve into the science behind sleep and depression and arm ourselves with knowledge and strategies to fight back. Because remember, knowledge is power and with the right lifestyle habits, you can reduce your daily risk of depression by up to 57%. Let's get started. Reduce your daily risk of depression by 57% with these seven simple lifestyle habits. Science says you can win the war on depression by making these minor changes in your daily routine. This isn't just a wild claim, it has been backed by scientific research. In the modern age, our generation is facing an unseen enemy, an enemy that silently creeps up, leaving us feeling hopeless and overwhelmed. This enemy is depression. We are buried deep under a type of debt that has nothing to money. It's not student loans or mortgages that are keeping us up at night. Instead, it's a different type of debt, a more insidious one, sleep debt. Think about it. When was the last time you prioritized sleep over a binge-watching session on Netflix? We live in an era where sleep is considered a luxury rather than a necessity. Our fast-paced, always-connected lifestyles allow us little time for rest and rejuvenation. Sleep isn't just about getting rest. It's about healing and repairing the body and mind. Lack of sleep has been directly linked to depression, and addressing your sleep habits can significantly help reduce your risk of depression. So what can you do about it? Adopt a morning routine that promotes better sleep. This could include activities like meditation, yoga, or even a simple walk in the park. Eating a healthy breakfast, limiting caffeine intake, and exposing yourself to sunlight can also help reset your internal body clock. Transitioning to the evening, it's crucial to establish habits that foster better sleep. This could be as simple as reading a book, listening to calming music, or writing in a journal. Also, Keep electronics out of the bedroom. The blue light from screens can interfere with your sleep patterns. What's more, developing a regular sleep schedule and sticking to it even on weekends can significantly improve the quality of your sleep. Remember, the goal isn't just to increase the quantity of sleep, but improve the quality. To sum it up, the key to fighting depression isn't found in a magical potion or a secret formula. It's found in our daily habits, particularly those related to sleep. By taking small, manageable steps to improve our sleep hygiene, we can significantly reduce our risk of depression. So are you ready to make a change? To prioritize sleep over Netflix and take control of your mental health? The journey may be challenging, but the reward is worth it. Morning routine for better sleep. Evening habits for better sleep. Easy stress busters don't always go easy on your health. What we consider as solace might not always be beneficial for us, especially in the long run. One of the most notorious examples of this has been smoking. It's an age-old practice that has been prevalent in societies around the globe. Smoking, seen as a fashionable and relaxing habit, found its roots deep in our culture. It became a symbol of sophistication and was even thought to be harmless. The smoke wafting from a lit cigarette was believed to take away stresses and worries, creating a calming aura around the smoker. The act of lighting a cigarette was a routine, almost cathartic for many. Moreover, this habit wasn't restricted to a particular group of individuals. Even pregnant women, irrespective of the potential risks to their unborn babies, would indulge in this habit openly, taking puffs from their cigarettes without a speck of guilt or fear. This was a time when public health advisories about the danger of smoking were virtually non-existent and the ill effects of were not widely known. However, everything changed in the 1970s, a period when research on the effects of smoking picked up pace. 
scientists began to unravel the mysteries of nicotine, the key addictive substance found in tobacco. These studies shed light on the harmful consequences of smoking on overall health, with a particular emphasis on its psychological impacts. It was revealed that nicotine affects the brain by changing the way it works, leading to addiction and other serious health problems. Furthermore, one groundbreaking study in particular stood out. This study delved into the between smoking and mental health, specifically depression. The results were staggering, painting a grim picture of the immense harm smoking can cause. It unearthed that non-smokers have a 20% lower risk of developing depression as compared to regular and irregular smokers. This was a revolutionary moment in understanding how smoking is not merely a physical health hazard, but also a severe threat to mental well-being. It proved that what earlier generations believed to be a harmless stress buster could, in fact, exacerbate stress and lead to other mental health issues. This study found that non-smokers have 20% less chance of developing depression as compared to regular and irregular smokers. The loneliness epidemic is killing you slowly but surely. It's an insidious, creeping monster that begins to envelop you in its cold, lifeless grasp before you even realize it. A plague of the modern era, that's what it is, intensely magnified by our overwhelming reliance on technology and social media. We've become a generation of people who are constantly connected to the world, yet somehow we are more lonely than ever before. Every day, we are inundated with images, messages, and updates from our friends and even people we barely know. We scroll through our news feeds, liking, commenting, sharing, engaging with a digital representation of people's lives. Yet a deep sense of loneliness persists. This is the startling reality of our time. We are more lonely than any generation even when we are connected at all times. We are saturated with technology, yet emotionally parched. We have access to thousands of connections at our fingertips. Yet we yearn for genuine human interaction. The glowing screen in our hands has become a double-edged sword, serving as both our lifeline to the outside world and our barrier from it. And this stark irony is not without consequence. It begins to eat away sense of self-worth, your feeling of belonging, your very spirit. The constant online interaction, the endless scrolling, the relentless comparison with others, it all fuels a sense of solitude and a feeling that you are somehow alone in a crowd. Not only does the loneliness epidemic leave a void in your heart, it also fuels your depression. There have been numerous scientific studies that show a clear correlation between social isolation and depression. Individuals who are socially isolated or feel lonely are at a higher risk of developing depressive symptoms. It's a documented fact. People who had frequent social connections were 18% less likely to develop depression. So the question remains, in this age of unprecedented connectivity, how do we begin to combat this loneliness epidemic? This is a challenge that we, as a society, need to confront head on. We must strive to foster real human connections, to reach beyond the digital realm, to reclaim our sense of community, and to remember that we are, after all, social animals. In doing so, we can hope to turn back the tide of this loneliness epidemic that is, in no uncertain terms, killing you slowly but surely. Mental health, longevity, and better health span can all be achieved with one habit, exercise. The power of physical activity can't be understated. It is an action that, when done regularly, can transform not only your body but your mind as well. Intuitively, we all understand this. We feel the endorphin rush after a good workout, the sense of accomplishment, the energy permeates our being. But it's more than just a feeling. Scientific research has delved into the intricate relationship between exercise and mental health, producing findings that are nothing short of astounding. Studies have shown that regular physical activity can boost your mental well-being equally as effectively as medication, if not more so. We live in an age where medical remedies for mental issues are abundant. Many people depend on pills to manage their mood disorders, their anxiety, their depression. And while medication can undoubtedly be life-saving, it's empowering to know that there is a natural remedy readily available to us. Exercise is one such remedy that we can utilize without fear of side effects, without the risk of dependency, without the dread of withdrawal symptoms. It's a natural, holistic, and permanent solution that you can use with no side effects. It's a remedy that requires consistency, dedication, and effort, 
but the rewards are profound and long-lasting. A captivating research study found that a person who engaged in regular exercise was 14% less likely to develop depression as compared to someone who exercised. This statistic alone can inspire us to put on our running shoes and hit the pavement, or unroll our yoga mats and start stretching. The protective quality of exercise against mental health disorders is undeniable. But not all exercise routines are created equal. If your goal is to ward off depression, shorter high-intensity exercise routines produce the best results. These types of workouts, characterized by short bursts of intense activity by periods of rest, are not only time efficient, but also incredibly effective. Creating a routine is key. Exercise daily at the same time. It doesn't matter if you can spare only 10 minutes. This small trick of consistency will help you form an exercise habit easily. It's not about the time you spend working out, but rather regularity with which you do it. Establishing a routine and sticking to it can help transform exercise from a mere task to a nourishing habit, a habit that can improve your mental health, your longevity, and your overall quality of life. Exercise is considered the natural all-cure for depression, so it seems logical that its opposite could potentially exacerbate depression. Living a sedentary lifestyle, one characterized by little to no physical activity, is often viewed as a precursor to depression. This inactive way of life, where one spends a majority of their time sitting or lying down, can have severe implications on one's mental health. A particularly harmful type of sedentary behavior is mental passivity, such as spending excessive hours aimlessly watching television. This type of inactivity not only negatively affects your physical health, but also increases your risk of depression. It creates a vicious cycle that can be difficult to break out of leading to more severe depressive symptoms. However, it's important to note that not all sedentary behavior is harmful. Research has shown that low to moderate levels of sedentary behavior can actually reduce your risk of depression by up to 13%. This means that spending some time relaxing and unwinding is beneficial and essential for maintaining good mental health. But, it is the excessive, unbroken periods of inactivity that are detrimental. So striking a balance between activity rest is crucial. The key is to be mindful of your sedentary habits and aim to gradually reduce long periods of inactivity. So make a commitment to reducing your sedentary behavior. Alcohol, often seen as an enjoyable social stimulant, carries with it significant downsides, many of which society has grown accustomed to labeling as normal. While it can lend itself to convivial gatherings and memorable nights, the negative impacts of alcohol can't be ignored. Prolonged and excessive consumption of alcohol has been to various health issues, both physical and mental. On the contrary, maintaining a balanced lifestyle can be a potent defense against mental health disorders, especially depression. One of the most crucial factors that can protect you from depression is a healthy, balanced diet. Eating right is not just about maintaining physical health and an ideal weight, it's much more than that. It's about feeding your mind the right nutrients that it needs to function at its optimum best. A diet rich in fiber, vitamins, and protein can significantly reduce your chances of suffering from depression. A decrease by much as 6% has been noted, highlighting the importance of a balanced diet. The MIND diet, in particular, has garnered substantial attention in recent years. It has been voted the best diet for both mental health and longevity for years now. Packed with brain-boosting foods like leafy greens and fish, the MIND diet can help improve cognitive function and mental clarity. Therefore, it's prudent to add a few of its features to your diet. Remember, you are what you eat and your brain health is no exception to that. Please subscribe, comment, and like if you found value in this video.